Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt here with a special video today. Today I'm doing a product review of the iTap from Bold Technology. Uh, what is the iTap? iTap is a counter pressure bottle filler and beer tap. Uh, real quick disclaimer, I'm not being paid for this particular video. However, the fine folks at Bold Technology did reach out to me and send me the iTap free of charge to try out and review and that's what we're going to do. Uh, in this particular review, it's actually going to be a two-part uh, or two-video review. Uh, the first video, I'm going to unbox the iTap, talk a little bit about what it does, the benefits, and who it's uh, really uh, benefit, who it's uh, built for. And then the second video, I will actually install this on my beer tap and discuss a little bit about the nuances of uh, installation, and then we'll actually bottle some beer with it. Uh, real quick, if you want to learn more about ITAP, I will leave the link down below to their website. And if you would like to purchase said ITAP, I will leave an affiliate link down below to where you can purchase that. If you click on that, it does benefit the channel, and I thank you in advance for that. So, uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to unbox this, and uh, we'll go from there. So, this is the box that came in. I'm going to op open it up real quick. The first thing that comes out is the instructions. Uh, real quick on the instructions, I give you a little diagram on how to set this up with your cake system. They're showing kind of a unique cake system. Um, this particular company is based in Russia. They sell ITAP now throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa. It's just starting to make its way over to the US. So maybe this configuration is, is standard over there, but they show the beer outline from from the keg into something like a glycol chiller, then up uh, up to the beer tap. Uh, they're showing that basically the keg's sitting out at room temperature. Most people set up, most of your home brewers and obviously the, the microbreweries around will already have the keg in some form of cooler water so you won't be connecting it to a chiller so you can kind of skip that part of the process. But if you catch down the instructions, just wanted to point that out. Uh, on the back side of the instructions, gives you a little diagram of the tap or bottle filler itself, and then kind of talks you through how to use when bottling. And then in the centerfold, you have a maintenance chart, kind of talks you through, you know, when you do need to do maintenance, when do you need to just flush with water, when do you need to flush with sanitizer, what have you. And then a full breakdown of all the parts of the ITAP, uh, including the parts numbers in case you ever have to reorder. Break this out. This is the iTap that uh, that comes. Uh, looks like you know, kind of a regular beer tap. Um, has this clamp on the bottom. This uh, particular clamp fit, fits these PET plastic bottles. They sell variations of clamps to work on different size bottles. They also have these this, these little plastic. Uh, notches that you could put in the front or the back or both and you could turn them in different orientations and they kind of set this up to work for all different uh, shaped bottles which is really cool. Um, they do work on standard 12 ounce beer bottles that we have in the States but again if you have different size bottles you can change these clamps out. Speaking of which they sent me a second clamp um, that this particular clamp does work on the 12 ounce bottles. This one likes to work on the, the uh, regular plastic bottles. And last but not least, they sent me all the little parts I would need. Uh, this particular one is the beer shank. Uh, goes from your keg, fridge, whatever you have into the uh, beer line in. And just screw that in, then you would screw in um, to your keg fridge and then they carry all the little all the little back end attachments and the little gaskets that go with it uh, real quick to describe this on the back side you have on a regular tap you just have the beer in but here you have a beer in you have a co2 in and then you have a, kind of a bleed off valve, uh, any extra pressure, bleed off oxygen out of the bottle, or if you got a little bit of foaming, any excess foam bleeds out that backside. So that's what came in the box for the 
for the ITAP. Real quick, I want to kind of give you a, a pseudo demonstration about how this works. Um, I'll, you would take a plastic bottle, put this on, clamp it, voila, it holds in place. And then what you would do was you would flush this bottle. You'd have oxygen in this bottle. You'd flush CO2 in the bottle. It'd flush out. Oxygen would come out here. You'd flush out the oxygen, flush it with CO2. Then you could start filling the bottle. And the way it fills is it would fill from the outside. It sprays the beer on the outside and it works its way down, causing practically no foaming that way. And then this pressure release valve also kind of works as a flow rate adjuster so you can kind of adjust the flow rate what have you and then once you're done unattach so that's kind of a big demonstration of that like so in the next video i'll put this to use so I'll, I'll get this connected and we'll bottle some beer but i just want to give you the base concept of what uh this does now what is the benefit of this product why why would somebody want to buy it um First and foremost, let's talk about how beer's bottled and some of the, and some of the ways we can improve on that. If you take a new brewer, and a lot of you out there have seen my videos on like home brewing kits, you know, basic brewing stuff, we would take a, a Mr. Beer kit that has a little spigot on the bottom, you know, we'd let it ferment for a week, week or two, and then we'd come to bottle, and we would just take the spigot, turn it on, that beer would just drizzle down, and it would start to fill up, but you'd get some foam. And then once it got to about here, you'd have some, it'd foam over a little bit, but we'd fill it up, that's fine, cap it, and kind of go on and not think about it. But what's actually happening, though, is when we fill that up with that foam, we get a little foam over, we're wasting beer. We're also exposing it to oxygen. Now, I've talked about it in several brewing videos. You don't mind oxygen pre-fermentation, but you don't want it post-fermentation, especially in bottling, because oxygen will oxidize that beer, it'll throw off the taste, and also shorten the shelf life, and we don't want that. Now, what a lot of homebrewers do is take the next step up, which is using something like this bottling wand. It has a little spring-loaded mechanism, and you would just put this in the bottom, you would push down, and you would start to fill from the bottom. Now, that eliminates foaming, but you still have this wide open, you're exposing to oxygen, and you're having to hold this with both hands, so you can't, you know, your hands are busy, you can't grab that, you know, sanitized bottle cap to get ready, or you can't grab the next bottle, or you're having to do this. And also, too, though, you're holding this by hand. Well, I'm holding this right over. Sanitation. You can have potential sanitation issues. Yeah, you can wear gloves with water, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a dirty process. But we can do better, and we can do better with the eye tap. Again, we're, again, once we put this on, we're freeing up our hands, we're not touching, we're flushing out that, that oxygen. We're not worried about oxidizing. Um, really, uh, again, improving our quality of a beer. Uh, one thing, too, when using this ITAP, we're drawing off a keg. We've already got pressurized beer. Now, where that benefits is, again, take that Mr. Beer example. We fill this bottle. We're going to bottle condition, which means we'll throw a little sugar in. We kick off fermentation again, which means we have yeast activity. Dead yeast on the bottom. We're going to have sediment. We don't want that. So, again, we will be filling from a keg where, we, where we've already pressurized, we've already carbonated, so now we don't get that sediment in our bottle. Um, also, too, because we're filling, you know, carbonated beer already and we're we're sealing this bottle off we're not allowing the co2 escape so we're maintaining that bit of that we're maintaining our carbonation which is good so you're not oxidizing the beer you're maintaining carbonation and you know you control the flow rate um you control the flow rate it gives you an extra hand it frees up your hands a uh, really great product again helps us improve the quality of the beer now who is this product made for um again a lot of my new uh viewers who are starting off with like mr beer kits or fermenting a half gallon of grape juice or orange juice or whatever this is probably not for you this is serious equipment but if you're getting serious into home brewing if you're wanting to get into home brewing competitions 
where the quality of the beer is of the utmost, you need to up your bottling game. And that's what this is built for. If you're already kegging beer, if you're already putting your home brew through a kegerator or a keezer or a jockey box, again, this is an easy installation on that. Uh, one great thing about this particular product is they, they sell something called a G connector, which allows you to turn this into a regular tap. You'd connect it here. Looks similar to a Guinness tap, so it's not you know, Guinness taps rubber. This is made of metal, looks like stainless. Would attach that and it works as a regular tap. So, real cool there. Now, who I think this product is absolutely, absolutely perfect for is the Nano slash Microbrewery slash Brew Pub. Uh, one thing we've learned this last year or so is it's important not only to have a plan B, but a plan C, plan D, plan Q. And what a lot of breweries have found out was the standard business model for a very small brewery, and I've talked about myself even opening a brewery, is you sell those first beers, you start off selling the vast majority of your beer over the bar in your tap room. Well, this last year's told us, well, you're not sure if you're going to be able to keep those tap rooms open, so you need a plan B. Now, luckily for a lot of small breweries, the states realized these breweries, you know, had issues, couldn't fully utilize the tap rooms, so they started allowing growler sales to go, uh, the 22-ounce bomber sales, you know, beer sales to go. Well, a lot of these breweries weren't set up for bottling. Uh, you know, at first, again, you're selling majority of your beer over the counter. Maybe you sell some growlers. Maybe you sell some five-gallon kegs off to the bar down the street or whatever. But the bottling line generally comes later after, you know, you get more capital to do that. Well, now you have your bottling line right there. All you do is basically change out a tap and you have your bottling line. So now you're selling that bomber to go. And just... If, if I was starting a brewery, this is something I definitely would look into purchasing or probably would have because, again, it grants me that versatility. I could use this as a tap during my operational hours. Let's say you have a tap room 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., you know, four or five days a week. On the off day, so I can now turn this into a bottling line. Um, again, dependent on, you know, some jurisdictions may have different health code regulations, but for the farmers, for the most part, you could turn this into your bottling line. You could start selling bombers of your specialty Christmas beer, or let's say you do some fancy big beer, you know, similar to, you know, the Bastard on the Rye that you want to put in a big bottle or whatever. You can do those limited release bottlings using the ITAP. Uh, ITAP actually sells something called the ITAP 2 that allows two different products to go through this tap. So now you don't have to even drill additional hole, do all that, you know, do all that work to set up a separate tap. Now you can use basically one tap is two. You can run two different products for that. Obviously you would, you know, do some cleaning or but again, gives you more versatility, which as we learned this last year, these brewers really need because you don't know, you know, what the world is going to be like. Also, too, uh, again, this is so much cheaper than creating a whole new bottling line. Um, real quick to talk about uh, some of the prices. However, the particular one uh, they sent me that with the PET bottle um, comes in at 86 euros. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about that. If you go to Bowles' website to purchase this, er the prices are going to be in euros. So just be prepared for that. There's a little conversion. I believe like 86 euros is around 102 US dollars. Uh, the G connector that turns into a tap, I believe that's 86 euros, which is, or no, 69 euros, which is around 86 US dollars. Um, if you want the different clamps, I believe they're around 50 something euros, which is around 60 US. Just be prepared for that. Uh, also, too, on the website, they're quoting four to six weeks for delivery. I got a feeling that has to be a COVID thing. They actually got me my ITAP a little over a week or so. So hopefully all that mess is uh, getting out of the way and they can get these uh, ITAPs to you faster. So uh, we'll come back in our next video. Like I said, I will install this on my keg fridge and we'll do some bottling. If you want to learn more about the ITAP, I will have a link down below. Like I said, if you want to purchase the ITAP, I'll also have an affiliate link down below. And with that being said, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, 
Please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section or I'm, you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.